I'm feeling like something a little bit moody, so not as colorful as usual, maybe, although it'll probably change by the time um, the page is actually finished. But anyway, we'll see. I've decided to go with some, with these four colors first for my background. They're um, uh, Liquidex, sorry, Liquidex Art Basics colors. Um, if you do like them, then um, I'm just gonna give you the names very quickly. Light Blue Permanent, Light Blue Violet, Queen Acridone Magenta, and Brilliant Purple. So let's get going and um, I'm just gonna spread those colors directly from the tube onto my finger and then onto my page. So my pages are completely dry and um, as you can see I wasn't particularly careful with what I was doing. I just spread my paint around like a three-year-old um, and I'm quite happy with it because it's, um, it's messy and it's colorful and um, it's carefree. I think that's the main thing. It's not controlled. But it will become more controlled in a moment. <laughs> so... Um, I'm just thinking of adding a little bit to the background, maybe by doing um, some stamping. So I'm just going to find some stamps and uh, decide on a color. I think I'm going to go with um, a gold ink pad for this, which is this one. I use the Brilliance Galaxy Gold. Uh, it's great, really, really great color. I really love the that gold is beautiful. And it's still quite so so subtle. Sorry, I can't speak today. So I'm just looking through the stamps I've got. There's this one that I really like. It gives you a really great pattern. Let's grab an acrylic block. I'm going to stick that on. Ink it up. And then that's going to give me a beautiful pattern. On the background. Actually, you don't have to use an acrylic block all the time, you know, you can just go for it like this as well, especially when you just have only a tiny bit of ink left on there and you want to clean up your stamp and there you go. So, check this out. I'm just going to stand so I make sure I can show you things properly. Let me find it closer. Can you see this? On here. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's really catching the light, but it's very subtle at the same time. That's what I meant before. It's not, um, it, it's a light gold, not a dark rich gold so that gives you a really pretty effect without looking um old-fashioned i guess all right let's dry this up to be sure that it's all good the ink dries quite fast but just to be on the safe side i like to um you know give it a quick um a quick blast of heat gentle of course and not too close ever now, um, let's see, maybe I'm going to use one of my own hand carved stamps. This is what I've got at the moment, not a huge amount, but um, and you may have seen some of those in my previous videos. Um, let's see, what I could use, I think this one will work. 
the darker color this time. So I'm going to use a dark gray. It's better than the black, which would have been a little bit too um, in your face. <laughs> and this one, well, this rubber doesn't actually stick on an acrylic block. So you just have to go, you can either mount it on wood, but well, that's way too much work for me. I'm just going to go like this and press it down directly onto my paper. stencil with um, some modeling paste and I've got one here which will be quite fun um, it's actually a large one and a smaller version of it and it's like a big flower or a bit it reminds me of fireworks as well and um, I don't have the name of the manufacturer this was just a cheap a cheap stencil I got from a, a craft store nearby um, quite a while ago and there's just I had no packaging there's no name on it but you know this would work with any sort of similar stencil so thinking I might use um, the big one on the left the smaller one on the right or actually maybe just the small one let me have a think um, yeah I think this is a bit too big a pattern for such a small um, journal so I'm going to stick with the small one for now and then we'll see how we go now as you may already know you can tint your modeling paste if you don't want it to stay white but let me think what would look good here um, I think I'm going to leave it white and then uh, we'll see we'll work something out later on good enough and I'm just going to um, dry this up clean my tools and then I'll be right back for the next step in the meantime I'll show you the beautiful texture while it's still wet it's so cool having this glossy texture across the um, or on top of the matte background it's yummy but anyway we'll dry matte as well Okay, I'm going to leave this to dry and I'll be right back. So while I was um, drying my pages, which um, takes ages with modeling paste because it's a lot thicker than paint. And a word of warning about that, if you do use a heat gun or a hairdryer, just be very careful handling the modeling paste afterwards because it might feel dry to the touch and it might look dry. But quite often um, the layers underneath are still wet so be careful not to smudge anything um, if you rush a little bit but um, anyway I was saying while I was drying all this I was looking at uh, what I was going to do next and kind of realized that, that um, these uh, leaves here that I stamped earlier almost look like they're connected in between each of these sort of flower heads so I thought you know I'm gonna run with this and make them um, even a bit more obvious or make those stems a little bit more obvious. I'm going to use a black regular pencil. I use Prismacolor for that. And I'm just going to select a black, actually sort of a grayish one because that might work even better. Just because the stamp ink wasn't black. And I'm um, going to sort of redefine those leaves a bit more.
colored in my um, little leaves not perfectly because I don't want everything to be completely perfect but um, I've used a pencil because um, it still allows you to see through uh, the previous layers a little bit it's not completely opaque which is a good thing so now just to make sure that the pencil isn't going to move I'm going to need to use a fixative okay, so this is what I use a fixative workable mat uh, which is good for pastel, charcoal, pencil work and chalk. Perfect. So I'm going to quick, quickly give um, the pages a little spray outside. Um, Alright, next I'm going to use a white gel pen to add some details to my leaves. I think I'm going to keep these flowers white because I actually love how they just pop on top of that background so just to link everything up a little bit and give the pages some uniformity a bit of white detail would be quite good I think so I'm gonna add some now and also when I scrub that area here I actually scrubbed some of the paint off so I'll have to do a little touch up I just do that now before I forget and then it can dry while I'm doing my paint detail there you go how hard was that <laughs> paint for now actually one thing that I wanted to do was to um, sort of highlight the fact that these flowers are connected together and this because I redrew the stem here I was planning on hiding this bit here a little bit and instead I've highlighted it <laughs> so um, I'm just going to um, sort of tone that area down a little bit and some of the rest of the page as well um, I think some gelatos would be good for that. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be completely covered, but you know, at least sort of toned down. And I'm going to keep with a sort of similar color scheme. I'm going to use the purple a little bit down here and then rub it. Then that's if that's not strong enough, I'll go with a darker color. So maybe... Maybe let's go with a bit of black, let's not be afraid. This will help, you know, make some of the area stand out a bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit here and there. If you're a little bit concerned about applying the gelatos straight onto your pages and adding too much or making a mess or something, you can just rub it onto your finger first instead and then apply it um, directly to your page you can just go soft at first, don't push too hard that way you can control how much you're putting on your paper here so if I want to do just a thin kind of layer then I'll just press a little bit like this if I want to put more I can add more gelato of course but also push down even harder and not blend it so much but in this case I'd rather blend it a little bit if you find that it's too hard to blend it you can use a wet baby wipe and sort of rub it a little bit like that just to add some moisture and then use your finger again to spread it this will dry quite quickly so you have to move quite fast if you want to do it that way <clears throat> or the other thing you can do is just rub your finger onto the baby wipe to add a little bit of moisture then a little bit onto your gelato and then apply it onto your page it makes it a little bit more um, fluid I guess instead of feeling you know it can it can feel a little bit hard to spread depending on your surface if you apply it directly without any moisture but you know both techniques work depending on the effect that you want 
So as you can see, I'm adding a little bit around the pages mostly and then toning down this area that had some of the black leaves. So these, that bit, that bit, and that bit will stand out and not this section or this one anymore. They're still there. I'm not, I don't want to cover them completely, but the, your eyes doesn't get attracted to that section anymore. And I actually like the way that the gelato looks a little bit rough, a bit sort of chalky. I'll show you what I mean around here. So you can still see the blue from the background underneath and I do like that effect. Put some gelato down, you don't really like what you've just done. Use your baby wipe to gently wipe it off. And this is okay to do because I used a fixative underneath before so nothing's going to get removed. And I'm going to add a little bit of gold on my flowers because I had some gold in the background here if you remember from stamping um, earlier and I just want to add some subtle gold highlights on those without losing all of the white and for that I'm going to use um, pan pastels in metallics you know how much I love my metallics and iridescent colors in any shape or form or medium and in this case um, I've got the set of pan pastel metallics uh, which comes in a few shades of gold well a light gold and a dark gold and it also comes with silver a sort of dark silver the others and a light silver as well go like this as a darkish bronze and a lighter bronze or copper so you've got the stronger shades and the lighter shades most of the time I go for the lighter gold which is a little bit more subtle and then the darker silver because that one is really really pale and also the copper just pretty funky but it's not always easy to use it in the kind of artwork I create or color scheme that I've got so in this case I'm going to go for the light gold now because I use the metallics for highlights these uh, pan pastels are going to last me a very, very long time, I think. I don't use them that often. And when I do, it's, you know, it's a very, very light layer, like I'm about to do now. So for this, you don't even need any of the pastel tools. You can just use your finger. And the reason I'm going to use my finger is because I want to have control of what I'm doing. I want to be able to feel how much I'm putting on there. And I want to ideally still retain the background that is behind the flowers as much as possible and only apply a bit of pastels and highlights onto some of the petals here and here and here, of course. So I'm just going to add a little bit, not too much, just a little bit on my finger. And I'm going to rub very, very lightly on the top. So I'm not pressing down, I'm just... Um, just really lightly brushing and then I'm going to reapply it's really best to do this in very thin layers and add a little bit more rather than just go nuts and put too much and like I said you know I just want some you know a hint of gold although I always say I want a hint and I'm gonna do it subtle and then I just end up putting metallics everywhere so <laughs> Bear with me, I will try to control myself. I promise. But they are so delicious. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's just, you know, the fact that it catches the light and makes everything shine. I love shiny things. I don't actually love gold as a metal itself. I especially, well, white gold is okay, like my ring, but uh, yellow gold I don't actually like. In jewelry. In here? Beautiful. So I continue applying a little bit and I'm just looking at my page sideways as well so I can see where it's going and where I want to add a tiny bit more. 
I may add a little bit on the background as well but I'm going to show you um, and I don't know if it's going to pick up very well on the camera but just showing you that it's so subtle you know it's just a little bit so you can still see the white of the flower and the background behind but you've got a subtle shine on there and um, you can do the same thing on the background if you wish you can add a bit more so because this is such a fine 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 powder it's really beautiful to apply even with just your finger like this it's just like eyeshadow basically so I'm going to add it a bit of everywhere on top of all the elements as well so they all sort of you know blend in together again I don't know if it's going to pick up too much on the camera but I'll try Thing there. Hopefully you can see the very subtle shine. If not, just take my word for it. It's pretty. <laughs> and you know what? There's a bit of um, empty space around here which would be a good spot to add a quote if you wanted to do something similar to what I've done. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it like this because I just it's nice to have some breathing space on your artwork sometimes you don't necessarily have to have texture and um, designs and details everywhere because you know it you lose the effect that you um, aiming for basically but if you do leave some empty spaces or some that have less details and less stuff going on then it makes everything else pop and your eyes get attracted to those areas rather than trying to look for something to look at because it's so busy so um, just on purpose I'm going to leave this area quite plain and you know contrasting with the rest but what I will do is um, add a little bit more gold um, stamping in that area just a little bit so we've got a bit more texture but it's still subtle and in the background not in the foreground so i'm going to use the same stamp i had before it around to see where I've put stuff and where I need to put anything else but it's looking pretty good so I'm going to stop now before I overdo it and that's one thing that is very easy <laughs> to do when you get carried away adding and adding and just before you know it your whole page is ruined because you've just done too much to it so you have to know when to stop now because I've put some pastels on there I'm going to use the same fixative I had before which um, if you remember did say that it works for pastel and uh, pencils and chalks and all of that. So I'll add a layer of that. Actually, is this something missing? So I decided to get back to it this morning uh, with fresh eyes. And I seriously recommend you do that whenever you feel a bit stuck or you just don't know what else to do anymore. Just basically leave your artwork alone for a while. Walk away have a cup of tea or just you know leave it overnight and come back the next day and you know you might have better ideas um, some inspiration may have come to you overnight and if it hasn't just leave it alone until it actually does so um, in this case I think what was missing and I didn't like so much is that the flowers are very white and on top of the background which is fine but I think it needs to be um, it needs to have more white to make the the whole page a little bit more uniform so I'm going to do this with a sharpie pen I need to shake quite a bit and test on my palette here yeah and I'm going to create um, some little dots around the page to unify things
Okay, so I've created a little border with uh, white dots. And by the way, I apologize for putting my big head um, in, the, in front of everything every now and then. Sorry about that. Um, I try not to do it, <laughs> but I can't promise. Now, um, I think it already feels a little bit better because there's white here, there's white around, there's white detail. So I feel like it's coming together a little bit better. I still feel like it needs something else, um, but I'm not sure what. So like I mentioned before, best to leave it alone for a bit and then come back when inspiration has struck. So I'll be back in a second. Struck, but not in the form of stamps or imagery, but in the form of words. And they just came naturally as I was um, <laughs> basically giving a little bit of thought. And these words are, take your time. I think it's quite appropriate about uh, what's been happening here and the process of art in general. No point rushing things and creating something you don't like. Um, just, you know, take your time and just let things develop naturally. So that's what I'm going to put on there. I'm going to use uh, stamps for that, at least for the as a start. Um, so, again, I'm sorry I don't have the supplier for um, these letters, you know, because at the time I got some of my supplies, I wasn't thinking about doing video tutorials and being able to uh, refer to products and that sort of thing. So I just threw out all the packaging. And of course, you know, the supplier wasn't that smart because they didn't put the um, company name anywhere. So I can't tell you. But anyway, I'm going to use white ink for now and I'm going to stamp all those letters. So as you may have seen, I had a bit of a struggle with my little letter stamps, which, um, you know, we all messed up in one box and sort of stuck together. Not a great way to store them. Um, and also they didn't even stick properly onto my acrylic pad. They just kept falling off. So in the end, I just pressed them down one by one just with my fingers. But anyway, all I wanted to do at first was to get an imprint at least in, um, you know, like a faded um, sort of outline so I could just add my own little decorations in pen afterwards which I have done here by adding little curls and extend little bits and pieces that you know um, that I like so that's something that I like doing quite often I love anything curly and swirly and spirally and I've added a few more around just to you know make the page um, look good I guess <laughs> there's no other reason really so now I'm happy I'm not going to touch it ever again I promise so this is um, what we've got and I hope that you can see some of the shine with a bit of the sunlight coming through and um, thank you so much for watching this video please let me um, know what you think if it's inspiring you, if you're going to create something out of it, leave me a comment and I'd be really happy if you subscribed if you haven't um, done so already. You know, the more people I have on the channel, the more I know that it's creating um, something positive and making a difference and bringing inspiration. And that means that I will be even more motivated to create more videos and sharing more of my art with you. So thank you so much for watching. And until next video, I hope to hear from you. Make sure that you stay in touch. All right. See you guys.